Every journey has its challenges, and Peño hasn't been immune to those. He goes on to share how he overcame his trials and tribulations, and how reading has been a source of inspiration for him. And we're just about to talk about your brand ambassadorship, but before we get there, I think, you know, especially somebody with a name such as yours, like you're a son of a prominent figure in our country. So the assumption is that you've, of course, always had things on a silver platter and everywhere, every door you knock is just opened for you. Have you experienced any challenges in your career, in your life? Like, have you, do you know what hitting rock bottom is? Oh yeah, I mean, hitting rock bottom, huh? I've been there. I've, I've scraped the bottom of the barrel. Um, but just to address the issue of being the son of a prominent figure, um, it does come with a lot of prejudgment. Um, but I've always said that even if, um, you know, your prominent person that you know in your life opens a door for you, it's still upon you as an individual to walk through that door and prove that person right. Remember what that person is, is putting their whole reputation on you. So much as maybe you get opportunities, and I'm not saying I have, um, because I'm in a completely different industry. I've been working in a completely in different industry than my father even understands, you know. So I, I'd like to believe that everything that I've done, um, I've, I've, I've worked hard for, you know. Um, if indeed the name has enabled a couple of other doors uh, to open for me, that's great, you know, and I appreciate um, the legacy my father has then built through his hard work. So it becomes more important for me to even work harder because I need a legacy to carry on. So, uh, but going back to rock bottom, um, I've hit rock bottom and I hit rock bottom in 2010 when the business I was running failed. We decided with my partners to, to fold um, and my marriage uh, failed at the same time. You know, so uh, I've hit rock bottom. Um, I know everything that there is to know about having absolutely nothing in your bank account, having nothing, you know, no one to go home to. Um, so yeah, I've been there. And how was that for you? How did you get out of it? That was the most difficult period in my life. And I got out of it with the support of uh, my brothers and cousins. I think family, uh, I, I had possibly taken family for granted uh, up until that point, you know. And if it wasn't for my family, and in particular my two brothers and uh, two or three of my cousins, um, I, I don't think I'd be where I am here today because they literally pulled me up by the scruff of the neck and said, hey, let's go, we've got you, you know, to a point where um, I couldn't afford to buy myself dinner. You know, when I started at Yaron FM, this was the point I was at in my life, um, I couldn't afford to buy myself dinner. So I'd go to have dinner at my younger brother's place, you know. I couldn't afford to fill up my own car. So someone else would help me with a couple of hundred bucks uh, for petrol to make sure I get to work and get back, you know. Um, I remember one of the, my fondest memories now is I, I couldn't afford milk. So I used to have my cereal with warm water to eat breakfast and, and, and get to work in the morning, you know. So, so yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've been to rock bottom. You know, there's, there's a couple of other memories, but yeah. You won't go there. Well, we now can you're gonna if make you have me the cry. time. No, 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 I think let's just leave it right there. You're a Shell brand ambassador. Yeah. Totally amazing. Congratulations on Thank that. You. you know, take us into that. How did that come about and what does it mean? <laughs> I got a phone call. Uh, from the marketing manager, uh, the marketing manager of uh, Vivo Energy Botswana, who's the company that's uh, licensed to market the Shell brand in our territory, and uh, she said to me, "Hey, listen, you know, I'm, I, I've been following your career. I like what you do. I like what you stand for. We're looking for a brand ambassador. Would you be interested?" And I thought, "Nah." not in Botswana, you know, come to my office and you know, we went through the whole thing, I had to, you know, do, much as I was excited, I was incredibly excited to have an opportunity to endorse a brand or to represent a brand, um, but I had to make a very calculated choice. I, I needed to see what the brand stood for and if those values translated to my personal values, you know. Um, I found that they did and I finally said, okay, let's do it. Um, what it means for me, uh, it's, it's an incredible honor. Uh, and it's a privilege for me to be able to represent um, the one brand that's been in the country in terms of oil and, 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 and uh, uh, fuels. It's, you know, they've had a presence in the country for over 100 years. You know, they were here first, the Shell brand. Um, so for me, it's a great honor to be, to be recognized as someone that can add value by a brand with such history. But I think I see it with a response, as a responsibility as well. Because a lot of companies who are not maybe as risk-taking and as forward-thinking as Shell, 
are looking to see how I behave as a Shell ambassador, how I represent the brand. So there's a massive responsibility on my part to make sure that the investment that Shell made uh, in me pays off but also to show other companies that look, there are people in this country, bankable, reputable uh, people and brands in this country that you can align with your brand um, you know, for, for, for a return, a positive ret return. Yeah. Speaking about being a reputable person, you're also part of the 2015 um, Mandela Washington Fellowship cohort. Uh, so please just tell us about that experience. Um, that was an incredibly life-changing experience and I think um, it was through the Mandela Washington Fellowship that I finally got the courage and got to the point that, listen, um, it's time to wrap up what I think has been a really great uh, broadcasting career and it's time for me to take it to the next level. You know, we tend to have uh, fears, you know, what could be next, what am I going to do, you know, is this the right time? Um, my, my brand, my profile is high right now, you know, is this the right time to quit, is this the right time to change? And through the fellowship, I think I got uh, the right thinking, um, I got the right frame of mind and I got the confidence to say, you know what, um, if I'm going to really do something about my dreams and my goals, I have to make bold actions. And you know, that bold action was deciding, all right, this is where, um, you know, uh, radio ends for me, or at the very least, prime time, full time radio. Um, this is where it ends for me, time for me to start something new that'll get me closer to, to where I want to be. Did you get to touch President Barack Obama? No, I did not. Um, I, I don't know. I think I'm a little bit of a funny person. You know, I, I, I tend to try and stay, hang back a little bit. Um, after the president uh, addressed us, you know, a lot of people were getting there to get selfies and shake his hand, etc., etc. And I, I, I'm not just about crowds and, you know, I just... You're cool like that. Yeah, you I'm, no, I'm Peño Moronga. Yes, Barack, no, I'm, I'm Peño Moronga. Peño Moronga. <laughs> if Barry wants to talk to me, he'll come to me. Now. Let's go right into yeah. reading as a source of inspiration. You actually brought your whole library, so get us into this. First of all, you know, why read so much? I'm assuming this is just part of, you know, what yeah, you this, possibly got stashed somewhere at home. This is a very small part of my library, but I read because I'm curious. I think I'm a genuinely curious person. Um, I have a, 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 a genuine thirst or hunger to know stuff, uh, particularly around the, the, the areas that I'm passionate about. You know, so areas of economics, politics, business, you know, that's, that's the kind of books that I read, uh, personal development, self-development. So I read a lot and I think in fact I buy, more, I buy books more than I actually read. Um, but I think my inspiration for reading came from my father and he actually bought me my very first book, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad. And, and in his explaining why that particular book, he said that it, it, it gave him so much and he wanted to give his kids, he bought one for each of us, you know, uh, my brothers and I, and he wanted to give his kids the gift of how to manage your money, understanding business and money and that kind of thing. So that's the first book I read and <clears throat> It just, it just kind of caught on and the funny thing is by the time I finished my first semester at university I'd read more books than I'd ever read in my life and that was two. Whoa. Right. <laughs> I've literally never... I've, I, I'm You've actually, never been a reader I've, I've, like I've in your... I've never actually borrowed a book from a library in my whole entire life but I read a lot, I buy a lot of books and uh, yeah, um, this is why we have a sample from my Take library. Take us into them then. Um, okay. Um, the, where, where do I start? Um, I think this book, Donald Trump's uh, The Art of the Deal, um, is about, you get into the mindset and into the life of how Donald Trump lives. And in this book, one of the coolest things I love about this book is that um, he, he, he showed how as a business person, you, you want to be um, a partner to your lenders and creditors. You know, he was billions of dollars in debt but he couldn't be liquidated because if he was liquidated, the banks go bankrupt. So now they're interested, they have a vested interest in turning him from a multi-billion dollar debt to a multi-billionaire uh, that he is today. So for me, the most important lesson was whatever you do in business, make sure that your bank sees you as a partner, not just as a creditor, because uh, then you're in trouble. Um, the next book, um, The Richest Man in Babylon. I think this is, this is actually my favorite book of all time. And what I love about it is it, it really preaches the very basic principle of saving. Um, it, it, it preaches in the book 
always remember the first person you need to pay no matter how heavily indebted you are uh, you have to pay yourself first um, so so that's what I love I think a lot of people um, we struggle to save because we feel we don't make enough money um, you know only saving and investing is only for the well-off and the rich um, and and you feel like lahauka save a 50 pula a month um, that that won't get you anywhere but it actually will and that's what I love about this book it, it really breaks it down to basics and just with that I think what goes hand in hand with that is what uh, the late Matata Hasinelli once said to me, um, we were, he was inviting me to invest in a project. Uh, this was about 2009 and I said, I don't have that kind of money, man. What kind of return am I going to get if I put in 10,000 bula? And he said to me, young Morocco, the important thing is the percentage, is not the bula value. You know, and, and that has stuck with me forever. I'm, I'm happy if this month I save a hundred pula. Next month I can save a thousand pula. It doesn't matter as long as I'm paying myself first and then everybody else. So that's why I absolutely love that book. Um, the next book on the list, The Richest Man uh, Who Ever Lived. This is actually a chronicling of King Solomon. Um, basically his uh, success, his secrets to success, wealth and happiness. I think it's, it's a holistic book that, that looks as uh, riches, not just in terms of, of money, you know, but in terms of spiritual um, uh, richness, uh, you know, having the richness of, of a family and a support system and that kind of thing. So this is why I really uh, like this particular book. Um, this is a book that I'm currently reading. Um, I got this um, at Northwestern University when we were, it was one of the, the books that we, we had to read um, during the Mandela Washington Fellowship and I, I like it because it chronicles the stories of people who are regarded as authentic leaders, people who base their leadership um, on their own personal values. So this is kind of a practical guide to the next step um, of my life. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of books here. There is a whole lot of books. So <laughs> okay. you can just quickly touch on okay, the Okay, let me touch on them. Anton Rupert, one of the best biographies I've ever read. Uh, biggest lesson here, in business, it's not a partnership unless it's 50-50. That's it. That's that's the biggest thing I got, and that's how he ran his businesses. And then a book I read in 2014 uh, by a guy. He's on CNBC Africa, actually called Victor Komweswan. Africa is open for business. I love this book because it's from a person who is passionate about Africa, much in the same way that I'm passionate about the business prospects of Africa. And he gives a very interesting perspective on just how open uh, Africa is and how much um, economic and business opportunity exists uh, in Africa. That we just need to open our eyes to, to the continent and we'll see amazing opportunities. So yeah, um, that's just a small bit of my library. Not even a quarter? No, like maybe a tenth of it. Maybe right. a tenth, yeah. And of course you're going to give away you know, a book to one of our viewers. Uh, which one of all of these uh, do you believe is worth giving away to you know, one of our viewers and why? Okay, first things first, I don't give away books from my library. But what I will do, I will buy someone this book and gift it. It's not the same. I think it's better if it's a book that you've read and, and touched read. Oh, and oh, it gives goodness. it that personal touch, but let's go into it, Mr. Okay. Baroka. This, this is the book I'll give away. I think um, I, I want to give this book away because it really takes everything down to the basics. It answers the basic question, how do I begin on the journey to building wealth? How do I begin on the journey? to making sure that I'm financially secure and financially comfortable, you know. And I think this is why um, I'll then give away this book. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being so generous, you know, as giving away a book from your library. Wow. Something that you never do. Yeah. And it has been quite an insightful, you know, uh, interview. Thank you very much for sharing, giving us a part of yourself, you know, by basically taking us into your life and sharing even, you know, some of those deep, dark moments that you've had, as well as some of your highlights. It has been, you know, quite, you know, interesting having you here. Any last words that you'd like to leave our How to Live viewers with? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, I really enjoyed my time here. Um, buy a book and read. I think that's that's the most important thing. You know, read, feed your curiosity, um, and and never stop hungering to learn, or never let that hunger to learn something new stop. Um, that's that's I think the most important piece of advice I could give. Yeah. Quite profound. And let's leave it right there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. You too.